Well, I teach a class um, every spring, which is a Okay, sorry. I teach, a, I teach a class every spring that actually tries to focus on bringing this into some practice. And in doing so, you know, two parts of that I think are very important. First of all, most students, when they think about a community trying to solve problems, starts with the idea that everybody in the community has an interest and it's fixed. And so one of the things that I bring here is to try to help them understand how we socially produce these interests as fixed. How did that come to be? And what are the properties and, and things that take place in communities that don't let us see our own personal complexity? Even in, here at the university, we have constant conf conflicts between long-term residents and student residents of one of our neighborhoods. And they treat it as if the way to resolve this problem is to deal with each of the groups and try to figure out how to meet their interests. But they never ask the question, how did the long-term neighborhood come to think of this as what a neighborhood was? And how did students come to produce this as what student life was to be like? And so first of all, we end up with this theory trying to open up the historical construction of our conflict. And is that the totality of it? Because if we start admitting as a student, I want quiet time too. If I start admitting as a student what I productively want to do or how I care about people, we find it really very complex. And so the theory first opens up the complexity of ourselves over and against the kind of constraint notion that stakeholders or individuals have interest and they're fixed. And the second is to start dealing with collaborative processes. And that is to say, if we get away from the idea that our purpose here is to set and discuss issues, instead that we see our purpose as sitting here to solve issues, that this changes the nature of our interaction. Uh, most of the students, when I ask them about their favorite discussion in college, come up with a discussion which somebody gave them an absolutely irresolvable issue about which they had intense feelings. And they were very animated and yelled at each other for the entire hour. And they thought, thought that was their best discussion. And I look at them and, of course, to tell them, from the standpoint of this theory, that was the worst one you've ever had. It reproduced fixed positions. It was an issue that was impossible to solve. And you left believing that most core issues in life are non-resolvable. And the instructor got off the hook. They were able to pick a subject that they knew would take up the full hour and you couldn't possibly solve it. Because if you could, it wouldn't take up the whole hour. So let's start this differently. Let's try to think of what your discussion would look like if we pick something you could solve. And our purpose was, in whatever time we have, to adequately and satisfactorily solve it. How would this work? And so we work from both ends. What are the skills that are required to reach collaborative decisions that are mutually beneficial? And at the other end, how do we try to figure out what the end states, the kinds of values and interests that we have that we bring into these discussions? And working at both ends, a critical theory helps us both to give us a normative standard of good communication as a skill and give us a set of analytic techniques to look at how we fool ourselves as a way to understand how we got here.